Welcome back everyone. I hope you're all fantastic. We have the Boss DD8 on the bench today. This is the latest incarnation of their compact digital delay pedal. Starting with the DD2 all the way back in the 80s, they've had the DD3, which essentially early on was exactly the same as the DD2. You have the DD5, the DD6, the DD7, and now the DD8. They also made the DD20, which I got when it came out and was pretty much the greatest thing since sliced bread. I still have that pedal and love it. They also have their kind of you know, do it all delay workstations with the DD200 and DD500. So the DD8 has flown under the radar for a lot of people. I picked this one up on eBay. I just saw it for a good price and thought, why not? I love Boss pedals. I love Boss delays. So a Boss delay pedal should be a whole lot of fun. What I want to do is just go through how I would use this. There's a couple of settings that I consider bread and butter delay settings on here. You know, you got your standard feedback level and time controls over here. Then you have a mode selector. So right down the guts is just the standard delay. Slightly to the right, you've got an analog flavor. And then there are a few variations on that that we can have a listen to. There's a reverb and delay mode. There's a glitch delay mode. There's a shimmer delay mode. There's a modulated delay mode on here. You can plug in an expression pedal or a tap tempo switch over here to access you know, expression pedal functions or tap tempo. If you want to set the subdivisions with the pedal, there is a startup procedure to do that. You can read the manual or you can watch the video that I've linked in the video description because that's how I did it. Uh, shout out to Michael Banfield, who has a fantastic channel, some great stuff with boss pedals, great player and a very, very good instructor. I watched that video and got this set up to do dotted eighth note subdivisions with an external tap tempo switch very, very quickly. So you're gonna hear a lot of that kind of thing. Let's just start out on the standard mode, then I'll go to the right and give you analog. modes sound super musical. I like the percussive effect that is coming out of the standard mode on there. It's just really, really well voiced. And then the analog mode on there, I think I may even like that even more than the analog mode on the DD20. It really sounds like they have captured, you know, everything down to the weird kind of crusty noise you get out of an analog delay. There's a tape mode and a warm mode, which we will hear in a second. I want to hit this with some dirt. Let's go, this is the fun part. <laughs> Thank you. 
I am digging that warm mode on there. The tape sounds really good. It doesn't sound like a cartoon imitation of a tape delay. The analog mode, like I said earlier, is awesome with some dirt. Even just a standard mode is pretty rad. Let's go over to the reverse delay. Actually, no, let's hear some of this warm mode. I'm actually going to try and set up a very, very short delay on here just to have a listen to how it sounds like as a bit of a thickener with the level nice and low. And we'll hear it with a clean sound to start out with. Let's uh, just start with maybe something funky. <laughs> is a very nice feature. The reverse delay on there is super fun with a really short delay. I've got to remember that trick. Quite like that. And that shimmer mode, I really like it. It doesn't sound like too brittle or harsh or anything like that. Uh, that's a pretty creative little mode on there. That's a nice feature add. Let's hear the modulated delay on here. Now, I am running this in stereo. Make sure you're listening in stereo because the way this is set up is essentially sounds like there is a uh, phase reverse with the LFO modulating the two delays out of phase or the one delay line, two taps from it. I don't know the right way around to say that. What's wrong with me today? Check this out anyway. Thank you. 
they got the modulation on that just right, considering there's no way to adjust it. Uh, you know, that was something that I think they really had to get right. I love that it's not too overcooked or too wobbly. It just adds a lovely kind of stereo image to your overall delay tone on there. The last two modes on here, well, I haven't looked at the looper. I'm sure you all know what a looper does, but the last two kind of delay modes are warp, which does this when you hold the pedal. <laughs> It's kind of fun to throw into the middle of a solo, something like <laughs> That's kind of interesting. That sounds like some of the things you can do on stuff like the old Boss DSD2 and DSD3. I've actually got a DSD3. I need to do a video with it because you know, it's probably the best way to get like an old DD2 or DD3 tone without paying the extra surcharge of popularity on there. Anyway, that's the DD8. I've been really impressed with this. It's so easy to use that that becomes its big strength. You know, you just find a delay mode that you like, twist the knob, you know, in my case, just tap the tempo in, you can twist the time knob on there, find the sweet spot. It does all the bread and butter delay sounds you would need. I just feel like stereo, there's no ping pong mode in there. I feel like Boss missed a trick with that, a ping pong delay or a panning delay or one of those TC2290 style, like one output is phase reversed style delays would have been awesome on here. I would personally take that over, I don't know, say the warp function on there, but warp and twist are beloved functions on Boss Delay pedals. I think they were added on the DD20. If you've got one of the Boss dual foot switches, you can actually set it up so that you get the twist functionality, which kind of works like, you know, playing something and turning the time knob down. You get that like space echo sort of function on there. So warp and twist, you can get them on there, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, personally, I would have liked a ping pong delay on there. I feel like they just, they got 98% on the exam. They could have got 100% on there if they had that. For the money, this is pretty unbeatable. And honestly, if I was going to say to somebody, go to a music store and buy a delay pedal, that will just do your bread and butter delay things. Buy this because it's boss. It's indestructible. It's compact. It just works. And I say this all the time about so many of their pedals. It rings so true with this. You know, I didn't really expect that much, you know, a Boss Compact Digital Delay, I'm sure it'll sound good, but you know, will it sound great? The analog mode on there is great. The tape style mode is wicked. The warm mode and the modulated delays sound fantastic on there. Even the standard delay mode is gonna do the job for most people. So yeah, I mean, these aren't that expensive new, but if you do see one pop up for a decent use price like I did, grab it. And I wanna know from all of you, what is your favorite Boss DD compact pedal. Is it the eight? Is it the seven? Is it the old DD2 and DD3? Is there any love for the DD5 and the DD6 in here? Let me know in the comments section below. And I want to thank all my amazing patrons for supporting what I do. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, check the video description and you can sign up to my Patreon. Grab some of the music that I make with Ragdoll. Grab yourself some free cab IRs and join the Discord server. I think I'm going to go back to... Hmm, what am I going to do? Let's go back to the... Where is it? hopefully here. I actually have to stand up and look down. Not a good angle to choose over there. Actually, you know what? Let's do analog delay because I really like the way that sounded. With some dirt, I'll play you all out and play some more greasy licks. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. <laughs>